Hi, my name is Felicia Gath. I am one of the district ed tech facilitators. I service the North region of schools in the district. Um, and today I'm going to share with you all just a few immediate feedback tools that will make your life that much easier in the virtual setting. So one of the things that I want to talk about first is that Google is our friend. I know that we have been talking about Canvas and uh, switching from Google Classroom to Canvas, but you can still use your Google apps in Canvas and throughout your instruction. So that is the great part about the transition that we're in right now. But one of the great things about Google is that it provides you with opportunities to provide feedback directly to your students. So it de uh, depending on which app you're using, there are different options for providing feedback. So let's look at Google Docs. It, within Google Docs, you are able to provide immediate feedback to your students uh, based on the activity that you have. So if we go into a Google Doc, so we'll go and find it on our app launcher, go to Google Docs, Here I have several different docs that I can look at. And so I am going to, I'm going to go to this parent letter just as an example. And so once I am in the document that I'm looking at, then I can make sure that I am providing um, comments to this particular person based on uh, what they presented within this particular document. So once the document has completed loading and all of my tools are available to me, then I can go up here and I can um, I can upload something to it for uh, this particular document, or I can add a comment. And so right here is where I would add my comment. I must I will say make sure you have the correct dates and so once i have that comment added i will click it and that comment is there for whomever And then once that comment has been uh, created, then that person will receive a, an email letting them know that a comment has been made that they need to address. Once they come to the comment, uh, there will be an opportunity for them to make a correction. And then once they have corrected it, then once they have corrected it, then they can check saying that this has been resolved and it will hide the discussion. You can edit your comment, you can delete your comment, or you can link your comment to a resource. So that is one way that you can provide immediate feedback to your students using Google Docs, but it doesn't stop there. Like I said, the Google uh, apps are so amazing that you can always provide information to them. So let's look at Google Classroom. So if we go back and we go to our
app launcher and I just put it on a, a, a new page instead of going to it that way. But I go to my app launcher. I go to Google Classroom. I go into a classroom. Go into one that I did so to make just to make sure I can have the access I need. And so on the stream, I'm able to provide messages to my students so that anytime that they log into my Google Class. They can immediately see reminders about assignments that are due, tests that are coming up, things that I need them to bring to class or to have available during class. I can also go into a Google Meet and create a link and be able to have a conversation with my students that way face to face. I can also create an assignment so that I can provide directions and information when I create that assignment uh, because it gives me the option to provide instructions so I can give them direct information that is necessary to, to complete the assignment correctly. I can add my people and my students. And so once I have invited them, then I can uh, directly message those particular um, students in my classroom if I need to have a conference with them or if I need to have a conversation with them. So Google Classroom provides opportunities for immediate feedback, but the great part about it is you can also do videos. And so the students can see you and with Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, you can actually have a conversation back and forth with those students. And so most of you all are familiar with using Google Meet or Microsoft Teams because that is something that we have used uh, extensively uh, in the past. So again, like I said, through Google Classroom, you can post announcements on the stream. Uh, you can also do a Google Meet. Uh, we want to make sure that we are using our audio video tools to provide uh, feedback, but we're making sure that we personalize them, making sure that your communication is clear. If you need to demonstrate something, if you need to make sure that uh, students are understanding what you're saying, those are some things that you would consider uh, when we're looking at doing a, a video or audio, we think uh, we think about screen uh, cast. So, looking at screen cast, we have options that we can use in order to do this. And uh, we have a video that will share with you all how to do uh, two of our more popular ones, which is Screencastify and Loom. And basically, that is just a way for you to be able to have um, share your screen and share presentation with your students. And you can either have a video set up so that you're going through the process of teaching a lesson and the students can view it at a later time. Um, you can allow the students to come in and watch that particular uh, screencast and they're able to have more control with the pacing. They can rewind, they can stop, they can review something over again, which is something that they're not able to do in live time. But as I said before, the great thing is that with our Google Apps, we have an abundance of opportunities to communicate with our students. If we go into slides, and we have a slide presentation provided, then we can also make comments. So like I said, this is the cover of 
uh, the, the title page of a presentation. And so we have some information in here. And so if I wanted to make a comment here, I can click on the comment history. And here it gives me an opportunity to add with that familiar plus sign. Again, same process. I would add the comment. Once I add it, the student will receive a notification in their email so that they can come back and respond to it. Once they have responded to it, they can go in and check that that has been corrected and so that that comment will disappear as well as you have an opportunity to go back in and to edit or delete your comment based on uh, making a mistake or the student had already self-corrected that uh, particular issue that you identified. So that is pretty much the same process that you will see throughout all of the Google apps, the opportunity to provide comments to your students directly. Um, and then that way that they can respond to you. And like I said, the more opportunities that you provide feedback to your students, the better off it is. And we will be providing additional ways to provide feedback and we will go more in depth with how to use those tools in order to provide feedback to your students. I hope this video was helpful to you and we will be providing additional support uh, throughout the rest of this semester so that we're all prepared in case we have to go back to 100% virtual learning. Thank you for joining me.